Hello. So there is a issue I think is very pertinent online and in online discussions, debates, exchanges, and that is um, this phenomenon of viral videos that show confrontations and purport to show um, a certain angle of the confrontations. Now, there is too many examples to name, but um, by viral, I mean, let's say videos that get maybe more than 20,000 views, right? Um, some of them are in the hundreds of thousands, even millions of views. And generally what you have is two parties in some sort of debate. It could be two people, two individuals, or it could be a group of people and one person or two groups of people. And it shows some sort of tense exchange, argument. Sometimes it's physical. Um, and there's always a controversial dynamic to it. Very often it involves racism or purported racism. Now, what I want to really um, emphasize and what I want people to really consider is that everything we see online is from a particular source. And more often than not, that source will be biased. Either it will be from one of the argumentative parties or it will be from someone who sympathizes with one side over the other. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying this means it's inaccurate or it's fake news or anything like that. But I do think we need to be cautious when we are seeing a video that's taken from halfway through an argument. And you see one person that's looking uh, coming across in a very negative light. Um, and then the other person is immediately, people immediately defend them. That's not always the case, but more often than not, it is. Especially if the other party kind of um, digs themselves into it by maybe using a racist term, which is wrong. But that doesn't necessarily mean the person they're throwing the racist term at is going to be totally innocent either. Most arguments, there are two sides, right? So. I find it very concerning, and this is one of the major examples, let's say, of the power of social media, that you can have a situation where an argument that would otherwise be private, like let's say before the age of social media would be private, or at least not very public, suddenly becomes this talking point for thousands of strangers. And they get in and they pontificate and they form judgment. And I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else. I've done this. I have reacted to these videos as well. But I think we all need to be a little bit careful to appreciate that when something might appear a certain way, we are only seeing one side. So, for example, if someone's angry and they're mouthing off, maybe something happened just before that. Maybe they were assaulted. We don't know. So I think it's a very disturbing facet of the rise of social media that you have this sort of viral video where you only see one side now in terms of filming people it can have some advantages and some justification if for example someone is uh, uh, being abused by some drunk job and this has often been the case for example on subways trains and so on buses where you get some racist who's mouthing off and giving them a hard time then recording it can be useful because it can be used as evidence for a prosecution. That's important. In a way, it serves a similar purpose to CCTV. However, if the person immediately brings it to social media before going to the police, then I'm a little bit suspicious because I'm thinking, well, why did you not go to the police immediately? Um, I do think there's a lot of people out there who know full well that if a video goes viral, it will kind of get them a bit of attention. And that's not to say that they're not telling the truth, but, you know, you get these clickbait headlines and then you see part of a video and it influences people to believe, oh, one person's terrible and the other person's totally innocent. I'm not sure if it's always the case. Don't get me wrong, you get uh, obnoxious people out there who do start fights with strangers for no reason. And they should absolutely be exposed. But 
you also get a lot of situations where there's two sides to an argument and people automatically think they know the whole story when they weren't there. And I've done it. I'm guilty. You know, I'm sure most of us have done this at some point. We've seen a video online and we've reacted to it. We've got angry. Um, and I think it's almost impossible not to. Because people are emotional beings. We, we're not robots. We, we react to things that we think are wrong. But I would urge everyone, and I urge myself, I, I'm going to try hard. When we see inflammatory videos, you need to look a little bit deeper. You need to consider the source. You need to try and find other sources. And you need to really think about the issues involved. I think that's so important. And I know this is probably going to make very little difference. But if I can maybe get a few people just to think about these things, that's worth it. Um, because really, uh, people's reputations can be dragged through the dirt from this sort of thing. Um, they could lose their jobs. They could... And sometimes that's justified. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's totally justified. So, for example, the Yobs who invaded the IKEA store have zero sympathy for them. Um, but, but there's other situations where you get an argument and one person's being made out to be the devil and the other person's like, oh, this poor innocent victim who done nothing wrong. Um, there's many, many examples of it. And I find it alarming how quick people are to pass judgment without seeing the full context. They see what they see in the video, but the vast majority of videos only start halfway through. Also, if someone is filming another person without permission, I think the only justification for that is if the other person is being aggressive. But if you're just filming a stranger, that's intrusive. And there's, you know, that's another aspect. But this absolute contempt for privacy, um, it's something that also needs to be explored. So let me know your thoughts. And please, if you see these sort of videos online, you know, videos showing altercations, um, just consider it. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's inaccurate. I'm not saying it isn't what's being purported to, to be happening in the video. But remember, most of these things start before the camera starts rolling, right? Um, it's especially important in issues of law enforcement versus the public. Um, I think that that's a very good reason for officers to be compelled to wear body cameras so that when you get situations, which of course has been particularly relevant in the United States, um, when someone ends up dead or roughed up, it's extremely important that officers are compared to wear body cams because if they are doing their job and they're, they're, they're not in the wrong, then they have nothing to fear from turning on their body cams because that will show the whole dialogue it will show that they were asking the person to cooperate, the person didn't cooperate, and so on. If they don't wear their body cams, that makes me suspicious. And I do think America's got a huge problem with police abusing their power. It's, it's not universal, but this is actually a very important example of why it's important to know full context of things. Um, I think too often the police have frankly hid behind their uniform like... I'm a police officer, I can do what I want. And people have automatically assumed, oh, they must be telling the truth because they're a police officer. On the other hand, they are in a very difficult job and they do deal with difficult people. So that's, that's an area where video footage can be extremely important. Let me know your thoughts.